Good morning, good afternoon, good evening once again. Stage three, Vive la France. And my second race in, what time did I finish the last one? It's about five hours ago. I finished my last race up cold to Aspan. And as I mentioned in my previous vlog, this was pretty much my only opportunity to squeeze in stage three. So it is currently quarter past midnight. I was actually getting just a little bit sleepy just before I jumped on the trainer. So I'm, I'm still trying to wake myself up. I had a couple of coffees, trying to get myself alert. This is not gonna be fast from me. This is a matter of get it in the bank. I'm determined to do every single stage. Now, the likelihood of that is, you know, is slim. That things are going to crop up in real life, but I definitely didn't want to have already missed the stage by stage three. So that's why I'm here. Right, I just paused it on this screen here so we can have a proper look at what we're facing tonight. And it's, it's just bloody heels again. I mean, who designed this course? This is crazy. And so we're going, we're going up and then down, then up, then very down, which looks quite fun. And then steeply up, down. And then what looks like a, a reasonable incline to the finish. 37.7 kilometres, 675 metres of elevation. I'm trying to view this in my mind as a bolt-on from the race I did earlier, as though I'd been out for the day, done 20k and 800 metres of climbing before lunch, and now I'm going to finish the ride with 37 metres and 600. So basically a 50, 60k ride with 1500 metres of climbing, with a break in the middle. That's kind of the mindset I'm trying to get into at the moment. So if I view this as a whole new race, uh, yeah, it just seems even more daunting in my mind. Uh, but anyway, like I say, this is not going to be fast. I'll, I'll do what I can. I don't want to lose too much time over my rivals, but I just want to have it done. So anyway, I've got 14 minutes till we start things off. So I will load this up. See you on the start line. Okay, so here we are on the start pen. Just under a minute and a half to go. Uh, this isn't going to be much of a vlog either, I'm afraid. Sorry if I sound all miserable, but I'm not feeling particularly entertaining. And I think it's going to be hard to muster the enthusiasm to, to talk and commentate whilst grinding over this course tonight. Um, I'll do my best. I, you know, I'll see what happens. Maybe this will reinvigorate me. We'll, we shall see. Um, it's great to see some of the guys who I, who I don't get to ride with that often because of the time differences. So, a lot of our... American, Canadian, Australian friends are in the house. Great to see. Even the names I can see just on the screen there. Blair Drader, Jim Pocock, Brian Roden, John David Parry. Excellent to see. And um, like I say, I often miss out riding with these guys. The flip side to that is I happen to know they're all bloody fast. So this is going to be a repeat of the earlier race where half the field just disappear up the road and I'm just trudging around on my own for what I'm hoping is not hours and hours. I would like to get some sleep tonight because I've, I've got a pretty frantic day tomorrow. Anyway, oh my god I'm a miserable git. Sorry, I, should, I shouldn't have even done this should I? Well I'm here now and we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We are off. Go, go, go. Have a great race everybody. Hopefully see you at the end. Second race in a row where I'm with one of my co-commentators, Jonathan Crane up there, second place at the moment, just behind Blair Drader, D Daly, good to see you dude, Samet, and then around me I've got McNulty, Shane ahead, Ross Raider behind. This is your front bunch, Blair Drader, D Daly, D Cadiz, J Crane, J Salmon, B Roden. How many are in this front? It's the first five, isn't it? So that's everyone down to Jonathan Crane, Brian Roden. Where is he? Oh, there we go. I just got a glimpse of him. Yep, just in the background there. And then a little bit, a little bit further back to Doherty. I can tell you, I am currently dead last. <laughs> but I'm riding to power, I, I, you know, 
doesn't matter who else is on course for this one. This is about speed. So I'm riding, I'm doing 180 watts at the moment. I don't think I'm going to have much more than that for the rest of this ride. But we'll see if I warm into it. where we are on this course it's um it's La Salle to Le Vegan Le Vegan it's the first of the uh, stages that doesn't count towards either of the points competitions neither the, the flat nor the mountain so this is purely for time for the GC this one and uh, yeah as you saw from the profile it's very up and down more up than down it seems at the moment uh, looking at the front we've got still got D Daly B Drader Jay Summer, Jay Crane, Deke Diz, and then 200, 200 odd metres back, Brian Roden, C Doherty, and they've got a decent 400 metres over Kay Mullins and Jean David Parry. Looking at my distance, I would say they're about 1.7, 1.8 kilometres ahead of me. Looks like these guys just about reached the top of the first main climb. A little, little drop down now, and then it looks like they're going back up again. Let's have a look uh, further down, see what's going on further down here. Here we have Brian Roden with Doherty, uh, 480 metres behind the leading bunch. Next up, Kay Mullins, 500 metres back from the Doherty Roden group with Jean David Parry and Tin for company. Now, am I right in thinking Tin was also in my race, the 1830 race earlier, so he's double stacking them as well by the looks of things. Next up we have D. Badka, Badki, uh, 130 metres behind the, the quartet ahead. Or was it a trio? I can't even remember who was in that bunch now. And then a couple of hundred metres further back we have Jalzy and Castain with uh, Jim Pocock just lurking in the background there, I can see him. Always a pleasure to be in the same race as you, Jim. Doesn't happen enough. Let's go back and see Jim, there he is. With uh, uh, Erastu, Erasta, Erasta coming through. Next further back will be Kay Henry, there we go. Who uh, is sandwiched between those two, two groups of uh, the Erasta Pocock group and 400 meters back, Ross, and Gaffel. Here is that group. Ross at the front of it. Gaffel coming through now. If we go further back we can see, see Shane here. 50 meters behind those guys. 40 meters ahead of Maheka, Mahecha, Maheka. I'm bad at pronunciations at the best of times. Uh, and I say Maheka and then we've got another 50 meters to McAnulty and as you can see I'm right on McNulty's heels a fraction over 550 meters back <laughs> I don't care I don't care I need to tick this one off all right let's get back up the front here we go we've still got Daly, Samet, Drader, Cadiz and Crane Finally hit the plateau, which is nice. It's taken me a long time to get there, but my train has finally loosened up. Up front, Drader, Crane, Samet, Cadiz, Daly. 1.1 kilometers ahead of the next group. gap we 
we've seen at the front, Blair Jade has put 25 metres over the bunch behind. It's going to take a monumental effort to keep, keep that kind of distance with the power that those, the four guys behind him are putting out. Be interesting to uh, keep an eye on that one. back to me for a second to uh, just so I can see the profile on screen so I, it looks like I've hit what is going to be this long descent uh, the other guys are about <laughs> seven kilometers ahead of me I'm hoping that, that most of that distance is because they've all done this long long descent that I've just hit so I start at least eating into the remaining distance of this race all right back to the front Right, they're doing a bit of off-roading. No, there we go, they're back on track. <laughs> okay, front group reached half distance. 36 minutes. I think the, the biggest climbs are in the first half as well. Maybe not the steepest, but the longest. So this uh, this final half could, be, could, could go by quicker than that. Taking a wrong turn somewhere. I'm watching these guys and they're blasting downhill the whole time. All I seem to be doing is climbing and my last little attempt to get out of the saddle I can feel crap coming in both my thighs so I could do with some of this downhill action without a doubt. While I'm waffling as well let me just quickly say I'm really super jealous of you guys that went on the, uh, the hard knot trip hard not pass trip uh, it's a climb I really want to do again because the last time I did it the weather was horrendous and I didn't get to fully appreciate it and I'd love to do it with a group of mates and it looked like you had a real blast uh, well done guys and uh, make sure you you travel home safely and then get yourself involved in this you've been missed front here not one off the front this time but one off the back D Daly 40 meters behind the other guys look like they've turned up the gas a little bit maybe seeing that Daly was in a bit of bother and uh, leaving him there leaving him in their wake now oh looks like I finally hit another bit of descent as well Woo! I needed that let's hope it's a nice long one that was crucial timing with this front bunch for, uh, for daily, unfortunately, coming over the crest of that climb. Look at the speed of these guys now, and they're just going to disappear. Just to let you know what's going on back with me, uh, I am about two kilometers, made about two and a half kilometers, kilometers behind Shane, who is about a kilometer behind Ross and McNulty. I think that's McNulty. Sorry, my eyes are getting a bit blurry. It's getting late. Um, next up the road is uh, Mahetcha and Gaff Gaffel, was it? Uh, no, I'm not going to try reading them at the moment. I'll focus properly on them in a bit. Let's keep an eye on these guys. This is a fast finish. I, I think there's a climb, isn't there, towards the end. So they want to be together at the bottom of this... Uh, this lovely long downhill section so they can just attack each other on the final ramp I'm excited for this finish, I've got to say this is the best race I've watched so far, that's for, 
that's for sure. Looks like Sammet's been dropped as well. 48, 50 meters behind now. So it's down to Crane, Drader and Cadiz at the moment. Unless Samet can find something on that final ramp. Looking further back, Daly now 150 metres behind. Brian Roden and C. Doherty, pretty nip and tuck. There's not much between them in 6th and 7. And uh, likewise, John David Parry and Tin locked together for 8th and 9th. Uh, G Geffel on the screen here from TT1 just to shout out Team Type 1 one of my absolute favourite teams uh, you, to be a member you either have or have somebody in your life that is affected by Type 1 diabetes and uh, most of the guys and girls in the team do actually have Type 1 diabetes themselves and the way in which they perform whilst managing all the complications that come with that is uh, something truly, something truly remarkable. Uh, we often moan about tiredness and hydration and just the sort of regular effects of the exertion, but um, throw into that managing your blood glucose levels at the same time. Uh, I'm full of admiration for them. I'm actually a member of that group. My my eldest son has type one diabetes, and uh, even not having it myself. I know how much it can uh, affect, obviously, him and everyone around him. So, you guys, always, well and truly in my heart, and it's great to see you in this race. Wow, well, I was trying to have a look at everybody on course. Didn't realise these guys are one kilometre away from the end. Wow, that went fast. So, here we go. Cadiz, Crane, Drader, under the Flam Rouge. The last kilometre looks pretty flat, slightly draggy. There looks like a bump there just towards the end. Wow, I'm excited, guys. Don't let me down. I want to see a full-on sprint. Big numbers. Oh, I'm getting cramped. <laughs> oh, shite. Now these guys are all climbers as far as I know, so I have no idea which way this sprint's going to go. Whoa, but Cadiz isn't taking any chances, 9 watts per kilogram, out the saddle, boom, off he goes. Got himself 8 metres over Blair Drader. They're quick to shut that down, look at that. Jonathan Crane, 12 watts per kilogram. Oh my word. This is going guys, 100 meters, here we go. It's Jonathan Crane. Here comes Blair. Oh, is Blair gonna nick it? It looks like Blair took it, followed by Cadiz, followed by Crane. Wow, great stuff guys. Brilliant race, brilliant ride. Well done Blair, well done all three of you. And here are the two that were in that bunch until the last few kilometers. And it looks like, how long have they got? 100 meters also. All right, here we go. Daily lit it up. Again, 11 and a half watts per kilogram. Summit seven. Yeah, Daily Tate, good job. Well done, Summit. Great race. Uh, next up, Mr. Brian Ronan. He's uh, shaking off Doherty for now. Only 70, 75 meters though. So certainly not comfortable with 3.8 kilometers to go. That one will rage on, I'm sure. <laughs> Inside the last 200 meters now for Brian Roden. 
He did do enough to keep Doherty back. Doherty now 125 metres behind. Brian's just coming into the hoardings. Excellent stuff, my friend. And while I've been watching Brian, I've also been keeping an eye on myself because I'm not going fast. Oh, hang on, I need to get the right man here. I need Doherty, there we go. Coming up to the line, good job, fella. Um, I'm not going fast, but I've pulled back to within 400 metres of Shane. Well done, Doherty, over the line. Next up, John David Parry. Um, obviously, 400 metres is still a lot, but it's a lot less than it was. So, I'm wondering if Shane is burning himself out and there's potential there. Assuming I don't burn out completely. I don't know how much climbing I've got left to do. So, that could be the end of me. I know I'm climbing at the moment. It's been 6 7% for God knows how long. So, Tin is actually very close. 7 watts per kilogram now. John David Parry is going to have to be careful here. It's going to have to be careful. Oh, I think Tin's going to get him on the line. He does. Good job. Great racing. Uh, so Tin takes eight, John Derry Parry in ninth. Now we have Kay Mullins. Oh, just as I say that, Shane's pulled out again now. He's just over a kilometre ahead now. <laughs> that must have just been the nature of the, uh, the terrain. It's like a concertina effect on the ups and downs. Yeah, definitely cramping. Here we go, Kay Mullins. Into the hoardings. Up to the banner. Great stuff. And then we got this little gaggle. Uh, or do we? Actually, now there should be a rider ahead. Here we go. We've got two riders ahead. We've got Iristu and Gilesy. Looking like this is going to be another nip and tuck to the line. This one's proven to provide some really decent racing so far. This route, love it. All right, here we go. Gilesy's lighting it up inside the last 300, last 250. No one wants to go first here, but someone's going to have to go soon. Who's it going to be? Here we go, Jarzy, six and a half watts per kilogram. The Aristo's not even chasing. Eight and a half watts per kilogram. Great stuff, Jarzy. So I should be watching you, shouldn't I? Ah, oh, I missed it. Oh no, I properly messed it up. Sorry, guys. Oh, there we go. The Aristo over the line. So we did catch them. Just kind of. Uh, oh, I'm going downhill again. Right. So next up we've got Henry Castaneda Bat Backer. And there is another name in there, I can't see the name. There are four riders there. Oh no, there are only three. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Backer's made a move. Backer's made a move. 450 to go. Henry's following and gone past. And it's just a little fake, I think, from Badka, just to liven things up a little bit. And it's dropped in behind. 300 meters. Castaneda now at the front. Henry and then Badka. Again, no one wants to be the lead man here. 150 meters. Who's it going to be? Here we go, Henry. Henry's gone for it. Castaneda's gone after that back. giving it some. Nine and a half watts per kilogram. But I think it's going to be too late. And I think it looks like Henry's nicked it. Followed by Castaneda. Then backer. Good stuff, man. Uh, all three of you. Ah, Mr. Jim Pocock. Uh, got a little while to go. He's been on his own for a long time in this, I think. Riding solo. Just coming up to the Flam Rouge. comes Jim now, inside the last 200 metres, putting on a show, 4 watts per kilogram, good, good man. Last 100 now, nice little burst to the line, love that Mr Pocock. And under the banner, great stuff dude. Next up, we don't have Ross, we should have, here we go, Gaffle. And McNulty. No, sorry, we should have Makeda and Gaffle. 
There we go, two meters separating the two of them. Maheka, sorry I nearly missed that. wasn't really paying attention. I was looking actually further back to see how far Gaffel was and uh, didn't realise the banner was coming up so quickly. There is Gaffel. Last 60 metres. Great effort but a really strong strong kick by Maheka. Out of, uh, is that Columbia, that flag? There we go, good job man. Next up, right, we do now have McNulty with Ross 290 metres behind. in the hoardings, P. McNulty coming up to take 19th place, great job, and further back, whoa no we don't, we have, there we go, M. Ross. There we go, taking 20th position, M. Ross, great job, and then there were two, myself and Shane. Shane has got a 1.2 kilometre lead over me. I'm holding more power, but it's not eating into that gap. So I don't know if there's much I can do to scare Shane. Not in the last two and a half kilometres of the race. All right, Shane coming into the last 200 now. Even putting out more power, I made no inroads. In actual fact, I lost a little bit more distance. Uh, never mind. I'm going to try and keep this power. I mean, it's not, it's not significant power, but it's faster than I was going. I'll try and keep at least this to the line, just to grab some vital seconds, I think. Which I'm going to need, So I'm likely to get absolutely spanked on this, uh, this stage by my rivals. Great stuff, Shane. There he goes. Right, let's turn this off. It's just me now. 1,200 metres to go. <music> 2.50 to go. My glasses are fully steamed up. I can't see a thing. I can feel it. So I know I'm pushing harder than I was earlier. Still not. Big power, but I'm trying to just eke out anything to the line. Oh, the lights like have got under 135. I don't think I'm going to do it. Oh. Boom. Done. I'm not sure that was a good idea. Not so much the time of night, but doing it that soon after doing stage two. Oh. My average power is going to be shocking. 150 maybe, tops. All right, anyway, let's run through this again. So, your winners, 104.22.24. Brian Blair Drager, 104.22. 0.29 DKDs 104.22.38 J Crane incredible then we had J Daly 104.48 uh, sorry D Daly J Samet 104.49 Brian Roden 111.42 C Doherty 111.58 Tin 112.48 J Parry 112.49 K Mullins 113.32 Jarzy 115.19 Irust Irusta 115.22, Castaneda, 117.19, just ahead of Henry, 117.19, four hundredths of a second separating those two, uh, Badka, 117.20.4, Jay Pocock, 119.36, uh, sorry, 1 hour 19, 36 seconds, uh, Jay Maheka, 1 hour 22.08, Gaffel, 122.29, McInulty, 126.03, M. Ross, 126.52. Then Shane, 132.37. And myself, 135.08. But it's in the bag.
Uh, I've done it. I'm not missing a stage yet. I'm pleased about that. Yeah, I think I am. I don't know. It's 2.07 in the morning. Uh, yeah. Right, guys, I'm not going to stay here waffling about... Oh, I'm cramp. Right, I'm not staying here waffling about anything. I'm getting off, sorting out my cramp. Have a shower, I'll try to get some sleep. Thanks, everyone, for racing. Thanks, anybody that watched this. Sorry it's a bit of a scrappy, crappy one, but hey-ho. I'll see you on stage four.